Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast. You're listening to episode 186. Hi, I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode. I'm so glad you're here. Well, today's guest is a fellow young real estate investor, Zachary Beach. Zachary is part of the Smart Real Estate Coach family located in Newport, Rhode Island. He works alongside his wife, Kayla, brother-in-law, Nick, and father-in-law, Chris Prefontaine, who you may remember from episode 111 here on the show. He is a successful real estate investor, completing over 100 deals in under three years, and he continues to buy and sell property without using any of his own cash, credit, or investor's money. I'm really excited to have Zachary on the show today, so without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. All right, today I welcome on the show, Zachary Beach. Hey, Zachary, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Jacob, I appreciate you having me on. I, I really look forward to this conversation and thanks for having me on and super excited to bring some value to your audience. Yeah, absolutely. Now, hey, before we uh, got started on the podcast here, you and I were kind of going back and forth about how you have a young soft spot in your heart for young entrepreneurs. So you two, uh, for the audience members that are just listening in, are a relatively younger guy. So tell us about your journey, how you got started in real estate at such a young age, and just kind of tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, no, I, I'd love to. Yes, I'm 28. So I'd love working with people my age, just because it's hard to find a entrepreneur that's young and that is really getting after it nowadays. I just think with our society right now, sometimes it's the hardworking part has kind of gone out the window. So I love when young entrepreneurs come up to me and we start chatting and I love getting involved with them. So as I said, I'm 28. I've been doing real estate for just under three years now and have been able to complete well over 100 deals now and counting. And I definitely give the praise to my team and my associates that I work with around the country as I wouldn't be able to do it without them. But the reason why I got involved in real estate was actually through family business. When I first got out of college, I was 21 years old and I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I started bartending and personal training. And eventually, as you can imagine, so I was bartending at night and personal training in the morning. So I was helping people get drunk at night. And then I was making sure they were fit in the morning. <laughs> as you can imagine, I burned the candle at both ends, starts to get tiring. So by the time I was just about 25, I reached out to my father-in-law who had a real estate business. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about leaving bartending. I would be interested in seeing what's going, what you got going on in real estate. To be honest with you, I had no idea whether I I was going to like real estate or not. I just knew it was better than what I was doing now. Plus it gave me, it still gave me that entrepreneurial freedom. So I hopped on in and then fast forward three years, here we are. We have a great real estate business where we buy and sell on terms and I can get more involved in that. And we help people around the country build and scale their businesses in real estate as well. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Now I do want to dig into uh, buying and selling on terms here in just a minute. But before we get into that, I want to kind of talk a little bit about like the mindset you were going through and just kind of talk about that mindset piece when you were first getting started doing those first couple deals as a 25 year old no experience in real estate here you are in the family business now you know trying to learn the ropes and do deals for yourself so what was that like yeah well i got the poster behind me on the canvas prime that says mindset is everything and if you guys can't see it it's got a goldfish and then above the water is a shark fin so <laughs> i love <I'm> that <laughs> Huge person when it comes to mindset. It's extremely important, especially for real estate or just entrepreneurs in general, because you're going to go through some huge ups and some huge downs, and you're going to be able to handle the ups and the downs with still like an emotionally stable personality. Because if you're constantly living your life with the ups and the downs, then you are going to make yourself go insane. And I mean, if that's the mindset, then you're always looking for some external help in order to make you feel better. So I highly recommend that you look deep inside yourself and you really work on you personally, because you're never going to be able to grow your business 
business, you're never going to be able to grow your income unless you grow personally. So mindset is enormous. And uh, it took me a while to get used to that. So I just started out with some few books. Bob Proctor, I'm a huge fan of him. You Were Born Rich was one of my first books on mindset that I I read. So I just kind of went through the process and I went down this rabbit hole of personal development and mindset. And as I've grown personally, the business has grown around me. Yeah, I love that. And Zachary, I'm sure you get this question a lot. New people, maybe younger professionals, or maybe whoever it might be coming to you and saying, hey, I'm interested in investing in real estate. How do I get started? And I'm sure you'll agree with this answer. And my always first default answer is first educate yourself, right? You spend some time, kind of learn the basics, listen to podcasts, read some books, jump on forums, go to some networking events, and then kind of ask yourself some questions about why you're doing this. Work on that mindset piece. And then from there, you can get into whatever angle you want to take with real estate. So what kind of advice do you have for somebody that comes to you in that type of situation? Yeah, I would always want to make sure that they're 100% in line with our niche. I mean, investing in real estate could mean 100 different things, sure. any different niches out there. So if it happens to fit that you want to get involved in the terms business, then I would suggest that you do a ton of research on that and then find a mentor in which that person has a, a really a process and a system that's predictable that he's constantly helping others achieve goals. If it's flipping and that's something that you really love, getting your hands dirty in construction, then I, I highly recommend the exact same thing. So I would 100% and agree with you first, do research, find out what fits best for you. And then once there, dig a little deeper and start going down that rabbit hole and, and find someone to follow. Yeah. And that's the awesome thing about real estate investing is there's just so many ways you can do it. So many angles you can take. You can start by wholesaling, flipping, just buying some duplexes, syndicating apartment deals, buying on terms. I mean, the list goes on and on and there's just unlimited number of way almost to invest in real estate. So you found a pretty unique way and I wanted to start digging in on that. And that is buying and selling on terms. So explain to us what exactly that means. Yeah, so buying and selling on terms is simply uh, not using your own cash or credit or going to beg investors for money. We put little to no money down on any of our properties. And right now we have associates around the country that we work with and we control roughly about $25 million worth of property with again, little to no money down. So it's essentially buying on a contract. So there's a couple categories that fall into or different ways that we buy just in terms. So, and this may kind of spark some people's some brain now, some thoughts is purchase. So you got lease purchase or lease with an option to buy. You have uh, owner financing, you have subject to deals, or famously in Texas, we love to do assign backs, which is basically wholesaling a lease purchase agreement. Because in Texas, I mean, there's many different ways you can buy and we focus on owner financing and subject to down there, but you're not able to do a standard sandwich lease, meaning you can't be in the middle without owning the property. Yeah, sure. And I think when you're talking about a lot of these terms, it'd be helpful to maybe explain some of those. So let's start with lease option. Can you tell us exactly what that means. A lease purchase, pretty simple. It means that you're going to agree a price with a seller today. You'll then take over 100% responsibility of the property for a period of time. So you're taking over mortgage, maintenance, taxes, insurance, any and all future repairs, any and all responsibilities. And then you'll agree upon with the seller a definitive cash out date. At that cash out date, you'll pay off the remaining balance of the mortgage and the equity that you agreed upon. So a really simple way to think about this is really you're tying up the property on a net lease with a purchase price at the beginning and then on and before the end date, you're going to cash them out. Yeah, okay. It's almost yeah, makes sense. Neat. And that's either called a lease purchase or a lease option, right? Lease option to purchase. Yeah, exactly. So most of the paperwork or the attorney documents are going to come out as like a lease option. We always present it as a lease purchase because we do it a little bit differently in the aspect of a lease option tends to be where you're going to pay a seller an option fee and then you may or may not pull the trigger on that option before the end of the term. We like to be a little bit more specific on that. We typically don't pay an option fee. What we do is we're going to have a contract that actually has a definitive date and on and before that date, we're going to cash them out. So a little more definitive and less money down. Going back to using less of your uh, own money down right there with not paying that option fee. Yeah, that's correct. And then what we're still on this, we might as well talk about the exit strategy unless you want me to go into... Oh yeah, let's talk. I think that's important, right? So that's how you're going to acquire the property. And then what do you do with it, right? Yeah, so we sell all of our properties. We buy them different ways, but we typically sell all of our properties through our our rent-to-own program. So we're working with buyers that need time in order to become mortgage ready. So someone that's had a legitimate hiccup in their credit, such as like a death or divorce, maybe went through the 08 crash and had a bankruptcy potentially, and now they're back on their feet, or somebody who's self-employed and just needs some time in order for seasoning. Like myself, I bought my own property through our rent-to-own program. So it's been fantastic and we got a great deal and I can always go over that deal as well. 
So what we do is we then sell it to a tenant buyer. After we put them through our vetting process, we then get to get three paydays, which is what separates us from a lot of different niches that you're not just getting paid once. We're not just doing this for one time. So we get our first payday is the non-refundable deposit that we collect from our buyers. Pay number two is uh, the spread between what we have to pay either the seller or for its owner financing, what we're again paying the seller and then what we can collect from the buyer. And then payday number three is going to be the principal pay down or the spread that we've created from the premium on the first sale. So the buyer moves in while the buyer's in there and when the buyer cashes you out. Yeah. And you can think of when you're buying this property on terms from the original seller, that person kind of becomes like the bank because they're holding the note for you for maybe a short amount of time. And you're going to turn around and maybe reposition that property, maybe renovate it, fix it up a little bit, and then turn around and sell it to somebody else. So you're collecting that mortgage payment from that new buyer, paying your mortgage holder or that seller, right? And you're profiting from the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Typically, I, we don't do any renovations to the property that's rare. If okay. you are in like the flipping business, this is a great way to acquire your properties as you don't have to worry about closing on them within the first 12 months because you can do a lease purchase. Or if you're looking for more of a principal pay down, you could have the seller hold the note like in, in owner financing. So a cool way to get involved in terms within another niche as well, just to put another quill in your hat. But particularly, we are looking for properties. I'm sure you've heard this term before. It's like pretty properties. We're looking for nice moving ready homes where people want to live. So then that way we take the very high qualified buyers from our market and then we place them in the property. Yeah, sure. Now, when you're buying on terms, sometimes it can be difficult to convince an owner to sell on terms because they need to take that money and put towards another property or they're selling for a reason. So are there any types of properties or any types of categories or any kind of characteristics that you look for when trying to buy properties on terms? Yeah, so we're definitely in the people business, right? So it's these are definitely relationship driven uh, sales as it's not as cookie cutter as we're going to pay 60 cents on the dollar and then we're going to flip it or we're going to wholesale it. So what we do is we have a very particular system that we've set up where that includes scripts and how to relationship build and how to structure these deals in order to help these sellers to get to their, their end goal. I mean, really, we're in the business of taking somebody that of where they are today to where they want to be tomorrow. And if you can create that bridge, then the money in their outside activities don't really necessarily matter. So we are looking for sellers, particularly particularly that have the ability to wait for the equity. So they tend to be people that are in good position. It doesn't typically tend to be somebody who's in a desperate scenario because they'd be willing to take a heck of a lot less for their property just to be done. So somebody who has a really nice home, maybe it's a second home, maybe they've already purchased another property, maybe they've relocated, but again, have the ability to wait for the equity. That's our typical person. Secondly, especially in the owner financing deals where we actually close on the property and the seller holds the note, they tend to be people that are looking to get the absolute most out of the house. So most net profit and have, the, again, the ability to wait for the equity. So we're able to structure some great deals with them. Thirdly, on the subject to deals, uh, which means that we'll close on the property, the house will already have had a mortgage on it. So we typically buy it for what they owe, but title will transfer and mortgage will still stay in the seller's name. That tends to be more of a desperate type scenario where if they sell the house right now, they're probably coming out of pocket if they use a realtor or if they have to pay closing costs or something like that. So we can at least eliminate that part of uh, the cost there for them and we can just close it out, make it easy and not have them come out of pocket. Yeah, sure. And on those subject to sales, that mortgage stays in the seller's name, but you kind of assume it. Is that correct? So we're not assuming their loan, but what we're doing is we're taking title and the mortgage will still stay in their name. Most loans are, are not assumable. So with that being said, we're just, we're contractually obligated to continue to make their payments. And of course we would, because the only way that we can actually make money on those types of deals or the way that you do make money on those deals is you hold on to it for a longer period of time and you let the principal pay down and you let the market continue to trend up and that way you can create a nice spread. So those tend to be longer term deals. Oh, right. Yeah. Understand that. Okay. Yeah. And then you You've got the unique situation in Texas, which is just one of those legal caveats, if you will, right? So we explain that one for our Texas listeners. Yeah. So the only thing that you can't do in Texas is standard sandwich leases, meaning you can't tie up a property on a lease purchase agreement and then be in the middle controlling the deal and then sell it to a tenant buyer. You can't sell it unless you hold title. So we have a couple ways that we focus in Texas and, and we do buy a property in Texas. We focus on our AO agreements or our, our assigned back 
back agreements, which simply means that you're tying up the property on a lease purchase. You're then going to find a buyer, but then once you have that buyer, you're going to sign the buyer back to the seller. It's a one-time fee typically, but you'll collect a, a nice little payday there and then you have no responsibility. So you're in and then you're out. And gotcha. then two and three, I mean, we focus heavily on owner financing deals, which I would focus on owner financing deals in any market. And again, just to clarify and how we usually structure these are, we're going to agree upon a price. We'll then close on it. The seller will hold the first position and will hold the note for us. And then we typically structure principal only payments. So each and every month, we get a, a nice chunk coming off of the balance and then we'll have a balloon date. So typically because those you're getting all principal pay down every single month, those are going to create some heavy back end paydays and, and a great leverage against the market. So I would highly recommend that no matter where you are in any market, uh, you're able to do so. And you would focus on that as well. Plus, because you own it, you get depreciation and, and all that good stuff. Now, I've heard of having interest only phases, especially in, in a, like a renovation phase of a project, but principal only is a new one to me. So explain the uh, benefits of doing principal only phases on a loan term like that. Sure. We can go over the benefits to us. We can certainly do that. But for the seller, the benefits, because I'm sure that's where the questions come from. Like, why the heck would anybody ever sell you a house that's principal only payments? Sure. Yeah. I think it's obvious on the other end, but yeah. So positioning wise, you're typically able to pay obviously a higher price or at least lock in the absolute full market value of that property with them. And the reason why you're able to pay the full market price as being an investor is because of course you're getting the principal pay down. So if you're overpaying even slightly, that's going to come off within the first like six months, even 12 months. So then you got plenty of spread on the back. So for a seller, the way we position it is what I'll do is I'm going to pay you full market value or maybe even a premium. The way I'll structure it is with principal only payments. That way you are going to get the full price price on the property in the full payment each and every month. Because if I pay you interest, then you're going to have to claim that as income tax, which then you're not going to get the full payment. Yeah, these are all interesting strategies. And kind of a common denominator that I'm seeing here is I like to say as a real estate investor, you're a problem solver, right? So what you're doing in all of these different strategies is going out and finding a way to help two ends of parties, both a seller and a future buyer. And you're mirroring up some different strategies here or there to make different situations work. But at the end of the day, you're really just helping two people solve their problems and you're being that middleman or problem solver, right? Yeah, no, 100% agree. We take on some agreements and, and some properties and or some situations that your traditional person usually can't take on. And that's why we're able to create large paydays. And because on average, just in Southern New England, we create about roughly $75,000 worth of profit on all three paydays per deal. And that tends to be maybe over the life of 24 to 60 months on average. So, But the reason why we are able to create these nice profits is because we're really solving problems that not everyone else can solve. So we like to call ourselves transaction engineers. I like that. <laughs> This is creative real estate. So you're exactly what you're doing. You're taking on the current situation of the property, the current situation of the seller. You're figuring out if you have some options and how to get creative and how to solve their problem. And then once you have that that property lined up, you're then going to say, okay, well, I'm going to market this to my buyers. And once I have some buyers that I think I can get to the finish line, I'm going to figure out what their current situation is and how we can help them either through credit repair or credit enhancement and through structuring out this longer term in order to help them become a homeowner. So you're really exactly what you're saying. You're becoming a solver. So what we do. Yeah, sure. Well, Zachary, somebody might be sitting at home thinking, hey, this sounds like something I could see myself doing. It sounds like it's a very easy way to get started investing in real estate. But when it comes down to the nuts and bolts, what are some of the tricks of the trade for selling and buying on terms like this? I mean, how are you finding owners that are going to sell their property to you on terms? And how are you finding buyers? How do you logistically go about really doing your first transaction once you understand the intricacies of this type of transaction? Yeah, we keep things super simple because most of our associates who we partner with around the country are people that are full-time in corporate world or have another business. Um, they're doing this part-time. So we keep everything super simple. So a lot of our work is done via phone. It's really the difference in scripts once you understand the system, once you understand the business. So we're calling on for sale by owners, for rent by owners, expired listings are huge, and then maybe vacant homes and things like that. I definitely don't want you out there spending tens of thousands of dollars on mailings for our business because that makes sense and maybe like the, the wholesale market and things like that because you need to get like a lot more deals in order to create a huge profit. But with our profit margins, it only takes somebody that's in maybe a corporate world to do one to two deals a month to eclipse their salary. Because I mean, on average, I mean, even if you're taking on a $10,000 payday number one, you know, you do two deals a month, that's 20 grand a month. I don't want you, especially at first, before you have your systems in place to be doing 100 deals. 
it's not viable, but we can help you scale that as well. All right. My point with that is it's really going to come down to scripts and keeping things super simple and talking people through it and building relationships. And then once you have all the information, it's can you help them or not? And if you if you can't, you move on. And if you can, then you spend a little more time with them and see if you can solve their problem. Yeah, definitely. So, well, is this model one that's very scalable and will allow you to be able to grow and repeat the process and be able to grow and eventually, like we alluded to, replace your earned income with maybe some passive income or income from these deals? Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's why we're all in real estate, right? We we want to be able to grow uh, some passive income. You want to have great income that way you can get out of your traditional job potentially. So yeah, we actually do a annual event in April up here in uh, Newport, Rhode Island, where it's called Business Scaling Secrets. So we focus on leads, lead conversion, customer value metrics, and then putting the systems in place because we have a very predictable, scalable business. That putting the systems in place that way you can then know, okay, well, how many deals I have to take in a month in order to hit my goals. Then once I have that, who's going to run those deals to make sure that they're, they're getting to the finish line. And once we have that, then we have systems in place to actually walk you through when somebody actually go gets their own loan and then you need to cash them out and then you get your pay number three. So we've scaled this business that way, not only us, but we can help entrepreneurs really create a business to eventually get out of the trenches or get out of the rat race. Awesome. So somebody comes to you brand new, Zachary, and says, I want to get started spying and selling on terms. What's step number one for them to be able to do this business and be successful at it? Yeah, I always keep people, uh, I always start people at the basics. As I alluded to before the call, I'm more than happy to give away our Amazon bestselling book. I think that will, number one, allow you to see how we operate as a family business. I buy and sell with uh, my brother-in-law, my father-in-law. My wife is actually a part of it as well. And we have a great support team. So we're a family business. So you get to feel our culture throughout the book. Plus, uh, you get to see the different ways, which dig a little bit deeper into each one of these techniques that we use to buy and sell property. So I think that's a great place to start because like we alluded to earlier, even within the niche, there's multiple people. And I'm not naive enough to think that every single person that comes to me, I'm a good fit to be their mentor, or I'm a good fit to, uh, or our family's a good fit for them. So I would start there uh, with our book, and I can give you the link now. And then also start with a webinar. I would, we have a, a great webinar as well as about an hour long that walk you through the process that my father in law, Chris, does. So just those couple things, because I, I would tell you just be in gathering mode. And then once you figured out, hey, this is where I want to be, this is where I'm align with and this is what I'm passionate about, then we can always set up a, a strategy call where we can hop on the phone and chat and see if we're a good fit and, and how to take the next steps. Yeah, awesome. And I think I should have mentioned this a little earlier in the show, but if this strategy sounds familiar to the audience members, that's because your father-in-law, Chris Prefontaine, was a previous guest on the show last fall where he came on and shared a lot of these concepts and strategies with us. And that is the leader of this family business, right? So you're working with Chris. He's your father-in-law. That's correct. Yep. So we got a couple partners, me, Chris, and Nick, and uh, we definitely grow in the business. He, Chris is definitely a mentor of mine as he's been doing it a heck of a lot longer than me. But yeah, we're just growing it and, and we're having a heck of a lot of fun. So we always like to hop on different podcasts because I may be a little more relatable to your audience where you know I'm being 28 than maybe a... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I know Chris was a really great guest and I had a lot of fun talking with him. I have to go back and link that episode in the show notes for our audience members to go listen to if they didn't pick that up. But yeah, definitely recommend listening to that one, of course, with this one as you already are. But yeah, great stuff, Zachary. So you mentioned having that Amazon bestseller book is the first recommendation to the new listeners. And what is the link for that? Yeah, so we wanted to make sure that because you had me on that we gave away our book for free. And I, and I mean, absolutely free. All you have to do is give us our mailing address and we will send you that out. No shipping or handle or anything like that. We know how the other gurus do and we want to make sure. <laughs> sure. Well, really appreciate that. Of course. So it's free, F-R-E-E-S-R-E-C book.com. So free, smart, real estate, coach, book.com. Free, S-R-E-C book.com. Awesome. Great. We'll link that in the show notes for audience members to pick up. Really appreciate that. So if they're interested in any of these things we've talked about today on the show, first step, Give Zachary your information for that book. Read that. And then from there, you know, I'm sure it's just a whole new world of information. And, uh, you know, maybe go to that webinar. And then, yeah, I'm sure you'll be off to the races from there. But yeah, like we said, step one is to, you know, spend a little time educating yourself and then get to know the ropes of this. And then from there, you know, kind of work on that mindset and then start practicing these transactions. So great stuff. Pretty much it, right? 
Yeah, just if you guys are looking for even more and more information, we are constantly putting out videos on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Smart Real Estate Coach uh, on our Facebook page. We're more than happy to interact you, with you as well, as well there. So we're just giving away constant content that way we can help out all the entrepreneurs out there. So yeah, feel free to reach out. Yeah, love it. Well, Zachary, as we're wrapping up here, we've got a lightning round. We ask every one of our guests, are you up for it? Of course, let's do it. Awesome. Well, the first question is, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate? And then what'd you do to overcome that? Yeah, my biggest hurdle was not knowing anything. <laughs> I, I, I knew nothing about real estate business in general. I did exactly what you, you tell everyone else to do. I, I constantly studied. I just learned from my mentors, one of them being Chris, and I just put the blinders on. And a year later, I looked up and I actually knew what I was doing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, luckily for you and I and everybody else out there listening, this stuff isn't necessarily rocket science. You just have to spend a little time educating yourself, which you're totally capable of doing. And then from there, yeah, just get after it. So definitely love that. Just got to spend the time educating yourself. Well, Zachary, do you have a personal habit that contributes to your success? This is probably not even real estate related, but I am very much into going to the gym as often as possible. It's my sanctuary and it's where it keeps my mind clear. Between working out and meditating, those are two things that keep me going and keep my energy up. That way we can take on the world each and every day. Awesome. I love it. Well, do you have an online resource that you find valuable in your day to day? I don't know if it's an online resource, but I could give you an online tool that I love. Sure. Uh, I like live by Asana. It's a task automation type tool. I keep it on my phone and on my desk and it keeps me on track because between our personal buy and selling entity and then locking in and, and hanging out with the associates and working in the trenches with them each and every day, the calendar gets filled up pretty quick. So just so I don't miss anything, I use the Asana app because it pops up with tasks and I have to check it off each and every morning or during the day. So that is a tool that I use every day and definitely helps me with time management. Awesome. Well, Zachary, what book would you recommend to the listeners and why? You know, it's a pretty good book. Uh, this is Mindset too. It's on F Yourself. I don't know if you guys swear. Oh, yeah, right. Gary John Bishop is the author. I love it. Plus, he's Scottish. So when I listened to the Audible, it was a heck of a lot of fun to listen to. But yes, he talks all about mindset and uh, just a, a great, valuable, short book that I think everyone can utilize and always go back to. Oh, yeah. I've been seeing that pop up a lot on my uh, Audible account. So I'll have to check that out as well. But we'll link that book in the show notes if our audience members want to check that out. And then last question in the lightning round, Zachary, if you were to give advice to your 20-year-old self to get started investing in real estate, although you almost were 20 when you started Started, what would that advice be? I don't want to say don't go to college, but I only learned so many things there. What I would tell my 20 year old self is to get more involved in, in personal development and growth mindset. Because I think when I was first growing up, I came from more of a lack type mindset. I didn't come from a family that had a lot of money. I had a wonderful mother, but we didn't come from much as far as money goes, loving family. But I had a bunch of paradigms that I wish I eliminated back then because it would make things a heck of a lot easier now. Yeah. And those are like limiting beliefs or just changes in your mindset. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Limiting beliefs. I'm probably fighting a bunch of money paradigms. I mean, they talk about this all the time. Is you got these billionaires out there that still have money paradigms and that's not fun. I mean, it's supposed to be fun when you make money. And if you're constantly on edge about making the next dollar, then that's no fun. So I would highly recommend you start working on your paradigms. And I did mention Bob Proctor earlier, which is a guy that I follow. And he, he teaches uh, a lot about that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Zachary, hey, it's been a lot of fun having you on. I think you've provided a ton of value and opened up a whole new world of buying and selling real estate on terms, which is not a strategy that we've talked a lot about here on the show. So I think it's really valuable to hear your take on it and understand how you're operating your business. For the audience members that want to learn more, maybe reach out and connect with you and uh, talk with you about your business there. Where's the best place for them to find you, connect with you, do all that stuff? Yeah, I think the best place to start would be to go ahead and get that free book or start with our webinar. Because once you go through the webinar, you are going to get set up with a free strategy call if you so choose to use it where myself or Chris typically or another teammate will hop on the phone with you, chat with you for about 15 or 20 minutes, see how we can potentially help and give you some value and point you in the right direction. So I would always recommend start with the basics like we were talking about earlier, book, webinar. And then once you got your head kind of wrapped around it, then uh, love to chat with you. Yeah, awesome. And one more time for the audience members that maybe didn't get that the first time that website for the free book is could you repeat that sure free 
srecbook.com. So free smart real estate coach book.com free srecbook.com. Take a look at that. And then you'll be placed on our, our list as well, because we do have our new book coming out, uh, new rules of real estate. Going to be a fantastic book that's coming out hopefully by April that will be co-authoring me, Nick and Chris. We're going to get that out to you guys. So you'll be on our list and you'll be one of the first people to receive it. Awesome. So for our audience members, go over, check out free S-R-E-C book dot com for a free copy of that book from there if you have any questions feel free to reach out to zachary hey thanks so much for coming on the show today it's been a lot of fun we'll talk in the future yeah jacob i very much appreciate you having me on and yes i definitely look forward to chatting with you again soon all right thanks so much take care All right, that wraps up this week's episode with our guest, Zachary Beach. If you'd like to learn more about any of the resources mentioned in today's show, you can find those in the show notes. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or want to reach out to me, you can do so at www.jacobairs.com. Till next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.